Let us stand to our feet. Let us stand to our feet. How many of you in here today that the world will never come? Yeah. Sometimes we just gotta slow down and say, God, I need Oh God, we come to you and say thank you for the Thank you for the love you want. Thank you for all that you have given us your grace and mercy in each and every day. Now the hour has come for us to hear. We know that you are here and you listen. Now we want you to not only penetrate our minds and such. Let your word be the place for it, God, deep inside us. For it is others that we give the word of the people, it is just the children of God. We love our mothers and all that they have done for us, continue to do for us, and will do for us. But Lord, we love you more as you have provided us. Now, Lord, we ask that you move into this place of my name. That your presence be known in every part of the This is the purpose of our name. For many of them all to be you. It is in your son Jesus Christ's name that we do. That is all I say. Amen. You may be seated in the purpose of the Lord. Happy Mother's Day to you all. Let's give Mother's a round of applause. Yes, 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 yes. What I want you to do, I want you to just wake up, just sit down, let's stand up and give each other a happy Mother's Day hug. Go around, meet someone, introduce yourself, say hello. Yes, tell someone else happy Mother's Day. Let's move around a little bit. Yes, yes, great luck, great luck. The beauty, the beauty of women coming together, the beauty of women celebrating one another. Thank you. 
face or tears coming down their eyes and say, I got your back. There was a time, see, we don't remember that right now, but there was a time when women just looked at one another and said, I know you're with me. There was a time when women looked at each other in the face and said, I can relate to what you're going through. My husband's been sold in a slave auction. My children have been taken from me. And here I am, I'm left in the middle of the field with a basket on my head and feet on my back. And I got to do eight hours of work. There was a time where women were together on every front. Even being invited into the master's house, they come back to the slave cabin and they lay their head on another sister's shoulder. There was a time that we were so united. But somehow, some way, they cracked me one. The enemy crept in and created division. What happened to us? What happened? And now that division amongst women, we can't even look at each other in the face. And now they learn that if we put the same attitude and perception of each other on TV, that it, it, it will bring great ratings. And that we would watch women attack women. That we would schedule time to sit down in our living room and watch women attack women. What has the enemy done to us? That we have become a culture of women that have become selfish, self-centered. We care about our sisters from a distance. We're careful about who comes into our life and who comes into our home, who comes into our relationship. Our grannies and great aunties, they don't understand that. Because it was all about us then. And now it's all about me. Something has happened to who we are. But God gave us a story in Exodus chapter 2 that talked about a group of women who birthed the movement. A group of women who came together for commitment, faith, silence, prayer. God put together this awesome story about one of the greatest uh, 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 leaders in the Bible, Moses. So here we are in Exodus chapter 2, we can turn to read to Exodus chapter 2. We're going to read the entire thing, so just bear with me and be patient for a minute. Exodus chapter 2, I'll be reading from the ESV version of the Bible. This is the story of the birth of Moses, but it's actually the birth of the movement. Now the man from the house of Levi went and took as his wife a Levi woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, when she could hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes and that loved him. Stopped it with buttermilk and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the river bank. And the sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her young women walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant woman and she took it. When she opened it, when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, "This is one of the Hebrew, Hebrew's children." Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, 
Shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. When the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. He became her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. Bless us to read the God's word that it will say, Amen. Amen. Uh, the Heavenly Father, I just want to do something that I know how to act that you keep this space so that your word can take me so good. I need you right now, O Lord. I need you to bring back to my remembrance everything you have shared with me. For the things you have shared with me privately, I trust and believe that you will charge me to share with them, um, to your people publicly, O Lord. I thank you in advance for the work that's on the floor. It is in your son Jesus Christ's name that we will pray. Let us all say amen. Amen. So this awesome story of Moses, the birth of Moses, and I've broken it down into different acts because this is it's a it's a great lifetime movie, movie. And I want us to think about the birth of a movie. I want us to think about the birth of a movie. The Hebrews in Pharaoh today are becoming too large of a population. So Pharaoh decides that he is going to kill. All of the firstborn men, all the males being born. And so his his life was if the Hebrews team up with the enemy, then together they can take over Egypt. So Pharaoh orders that all of the males born be killed. Fearful of Pharaoh's threat, a couple uh, who were part of the tribe of Levi, they decided to hide their child and they hid their child because the child was beautiful. And beautiful in the Hebrew days simply meant that he was anointed, that he was godly, divine, a sign. And so they didn't see beauty and fine the way we see beauty and fine. So Moses was an attractive child, very healthy child. So his parents decided because the message was out that Pharaoh was going to destroy all the all the males being born, the couple decide, let's hide them for three months. And that's what they did. But they got to a point where Moses was getting too big and too loud, and people were beginning to know that there's a child that we missed. So they decided to hide the child again. This was their second attempt. The first was to hide uh, from Pharaoh, and the second attempt, she hides something from everyone. So she creates this basket, which is actually in part. And she raised this basket in this heart, and she used blood and asphalt and tar at the base of her heart so that the baby could float and not cry. She placed Moses in the heart, in the basket, and places him among the reeds of the Nile River, which simply means at the bank of the Nile River. That would be so far. That would be so far. All right, all right, come on now. Uh, so, so, so we have this wonderful story, and, and I wonder to myself, well, why would a mother place a baby that she was hiding in the first place? Why would she place a baby in a river? Because to me, that seems like there was greater risk to place the baby in a river where the crocodiles and alligators can get at the baby, where someone else can find the baby. Because if you're hiding your child, I would think you would find some other a little more secluded because you know people will come to the river. So I said to God, I said, God, it doesn't make sense that she would take greater risk of placing the baby in the water. But God revealed to me it's not risk, it's faith. See, 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 you see, she hid the baby, she makes the basket in the ark, and she places the baby Moses in the basket, places it on the bank. Of the Nile River, and I thought it was risk, and God made it clear to me, no, it's faith. See, see, risk, risk is problem based. See, when you take risk, it's problem based, but when you have faith, it's solution outcome based. 
See, when you when you have faith, you don't worry about the situation. See, when we take the risk, we're worried about what the outcome may be. When you have faith, you know what the outcome will be. Come on, come on. She she wanted to hide the baby, but she put the baby in, in, in great danger. And, and it's interesting because she knows that she must have visited the doctor before because she she sent the daughter to go stand by the wayside. Her name was Mary, and we learned that later. That's not in this primary text. But the, the sister of Ray stands on the wayside while the baby is in the river, and the mother says, Go watch. And see what happens to him. Now the mother must have known that women came down the bay in the Nile River. The Nile River was not salt water, it was fresh water. So they bathed in the Nile River. But she also must have known who was going to bathe. So Pharaoh's daughter of royalty and her entourage come to bathe in the Nile River. And they, as they're walking, they see a baby, they see a, a basket in the river. So Pharaoh's daughter, no man in the Bible, which I love, we're going to come back to, sends up her servant women to go get me the basket. And see, when she brings the basket, they open up the basket, and it's a baby, and it's a baby crying. Y'all miss it. Here's a woman who is not of a beautiful background. She is an Egyptian. She comes to the river, sees the basket with other women of the Egyptian background. It says, bring me the basket. Then bring the basket, open the basket up, and there's a baby crying. See, God created something very special that only mothers know about. One, the heart of a woman, and two, the baby heart. There's something about a baby crying that touches and penetrates straight to the heart of every woman, mother or not. There is something there. So she said, she looked at the baby, she said, this is a Hebrew child. So Miriam, who was sitting silent, decided to come on the scene. Y'all have seen this? There was a woman of faith that said, God, I have to hide my baby. This baby is blessed. There's something that you have called this baby to be and to do. So I'm going to hide this baby. But this baby is making too big, it's making too much noise, so we got to hide the baby in another way. So it tells the sister, you go wait by the wayside of the river. I'm going to place the baby by the bank of the Nile River. There will be some people that's going to come to bathe on the river. And these people are of cruelty. We do not have a order. Going back, the danger you put them in is 
is for his glory. And see, we were to associate with the faith in a river as faith. We were strictly see it as faith. That's because we operate in the flesh. While the sister is watching, I love it, because there's a role in this story for everyone that's on this earth. While the sister is watching, she don't jump out of the earth. She stays in her place. The mother tells her to watch and see what happens. The mother is telling the folks in her mouth. So Marion sits on the wayside in a humble position because I'm giving you they are Egyptian and they find it to rule the earth today. So you can't just jump out there or when you really like you know something you some fight. You gotta calm yourself, humble yourself, and she can't look on the culture of the kids. That's a measure for every woman in this room. Sometimes you just gotta simply do what mama told you. So Mary sits on the side, and when Pharaoh Scotty knows that the baby is a Hebrew baby, Mary steps in. And it had to be soft and gentle. Because the boy is trying to test me. And Mary says, It's right for me to go get one of the Hebrew women to come and nurse the baby. What a great unlost idea. See, back, back, back in those days, this is how awesome God is. Back in those days, the girl of different cultures, like Jesus and the Samaritan woman, we just didn't hang out together. You didn't talk to one another. You didn't walk in the same circles. But Mary, in her, 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 her uh, disposition, she presents herself in a humble state. And she says, Would you come to me? Go get a Hebrew woman because here's another piece of it, and I didn't dive deep enough, and maybe it'll come out on Tuesday in a Bible study. But there's also a connection between a baby and a breastfeeding. This is Ezekiel. Mary offers it, and the girl's daughter says, Yes, go. Yes, go. Go get a woman with a uh, Hebrew background. So, the baby, and, and this, is, this is interesting because uh, the thing that told everybody to come to court wasn't the leadership of the women, but actually the baby in the party. See, our boys are crying out. Our young men, our children are crying out. That should be the thing that drives us, not your own agenda. This doesn't hurt if the baby Moses is not crying, because that spoke to everybody's heart. And see, we don't think because our men stand strong that they're not right. But there are so many signs in our men who are growing up in our community who are suffering and crying out that we don't even notice it because we're looking at ourselves. Come on, come on. It's a healthy interruption. It's a healthy interruption. See, why is it a healthy interruption? Women know, come on, women know the difference in the baby's crying. Women, a dad, and I've been through this, the baby crying, and I've tried everything, I've checked the camera, and, and, and I've given a toy, and my wife walk in and hear the baby crying and say, she knows me. Because a woman knows the type of there's a cry for I'm sad. There's a cry that I'm in pain and I'm suffering. There's a cry that I'm hungry. There's a cry that I need to be changed. There's a connection between the cry. So a woman from a girl's daughter understands this baby needs some help. This baby is hungry. This baby is in need of something. Forgiveness and 
grace because Pharaoh Potter extends grace to the south because I know he's a Hebrew boy and he's actually supposed to be dead by right now. But what we're going to do is come with him. How many of us show up in a young man's life looking to stand in the grocery store or walking in the mall and you don't even look for a sign and you walk right past a young man and I'll say, hey, look at me. We need to take time off. See, it's that foolish concept. But we're going to have a burden of a movement to help our people, and especially our young boys, really for them to have to come to him. It's interesting that God puts this story this early in the Bible and focuses on the person that leads the greatest movement in the Bible other than Jesus, is Moses. So the birth of the movement is in this room. The birth of the movement is the movement is the movement that you work with. Thank you. 
is this that is there a role for me but before she moves, she must have prayed. She must have been close enough, watch this, she must have been close enough to the issue to hear her father say, this is a human baby, don't miss it. Don't miss it. You can't say you know him if you're not close. Who can you have something you want to help and we're nowhere near the issue? I need you to tune in to your sons and daughters' life. I need you to stay connected to what's going on in school. They may see it as a burden, but you need to say that I have been called by God to watch you. And I'm going to complete my assignment and deal with the dirt. And if you stray, I don't worry about it. No word of God will bring you back. And if I'm lucky enough, you'll pay me for it. But then, we have to be sympathetic and empathetic and care for other people's children. Yeah. Right now, you can't say nothing to my child. No problem, not my neighbor. Got down the street. If something happens, you come get me. Don't say that to my child. Your child laying in the street when I drive past. You come get me. Your kids ride their bike in front of my car every day. You come get me. See, we have to be humble enough. This is what's staring in front of the room. Can't nobody say nothing to nobody's child. That's not the birth of the movement. It's the crisis. It's the vision. It's separation. It's selfishness. It's all about me and my household. But then there has to be some women who are willing to serve. It's one thing to be obedient, but it's another to serve. So you, you have to be obedient, but you also have to put on a hat of servitude that you're going to help. Not be a hindrance. Nobody wants your pick. Nobody wants your two sick. She very simply said, You are equal in a equal to be the baby. She didn't ask for her opinion. Some of us, because of how we are wired, would have said, Well, I think it's wrong. She offered her service to the situation. We always have an opinion, and we wonder why our sister girls don't call us so long. Because every time I call you, you have an opinion. Sometimes I need you to just watch, listen, and offer. There's some women in this room. I believe it. There's some women on Facebook. There's some people who are paying attention. Who, who like, walk this up and trust God. There's some women who, who walk in with royalty. But they're humble enough when the girl finally said, go get me that basket. Go, go get the basket. And they're humble enough that there's women in the room and girl the world where Girl's father said, this is a human baby, and I'm not going to speak as in my heart's box. Because someone like us, we would remind the girl's father of his whole behavior. Nobody utters the word. There's a woman in the room who are obedient enough who hear the cry of a baby and say, I know you're going to get in trouble, but right now, you need to say to the baby. There's some women in the room like there who sit on the right side. There's some women in the room like Moses' mother who believe my child is drifting. I need you, God, to bring it back to me. These women are in the room. These women are around the world. If we're going to save our community, it's going to take the cooperation of women. Why? Here's why. Early in the Bible, they grabbed me on the serpent. They went to the Eve to take a bite of the fruit. They convinced the husband to do the same. On Father's Day, it does the money. We're going to talk about fathers. And the question on the table is, where are you? Women have to eat right now because the fathers are asking. So the 
question is on the table. What do you think? But instead of waiting on men, they were running around the country looking to God to start a movement. And that movement can start right here in this church, the birth of a movement. They can come together to stay in one church. Amen. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Let's pray to the mercy of God. We thank you, O Lord, for the word that you have extended to us. You have called us to hear you, O Lord. We thank you. We thank you for the birth of a movement. What a wonderful narrative that you use. All the story, the birth of old. Tell the story of the proclamation and the obedience and the humility of living. We thank you, God. And that same charge stands before us today. We love you, Lord. We give you all the praise of the church. It is in your son Jesus Christ that we do pray that we shall say amen. amen. There may be someone in the room that we haven't taken the time or the moment to give them an opportunity. There may be somebody who says, I've been walking outside of God's will. I need help. I'm about to enter into a day and make the spot of my life. I know I need to get on the road to God right now. Lord, as we are, we do love you for so much. Lord, we need you. Our servant, God, You want to be like your parents. And anyway, it starts right here with the cross of Christ. I'm excited for what we're going to be and what God has called me to do. And if you don't want to hear who wants to be like Christ, and maybe somebody here who wants to be born. Love to give you church, and that perfect church, and we can get the right church for you. Someone wants to be baptized and have been baptized and like to be baptized, we extend that invitation to you as well. There are none, we will transition to our offering of the office when we get in place. We'll be doing the prayers that we give to God, we give to God, and offer to God. But we also have a gift box. It's an electronic app. That's on our website. You can get electronic. We thank those who continue to give uh, electronically. It's always a blessing to see the love of the love of the This is a wonderful day. And we continue to receive outside gifts.
make sure you guys are texting and walk out the door. So I would like to be able to have such a PC friend. All the PC. That's awesome. So we thank you. Our, our new circuit leader, Violet.